We have in front on our screen some. Okay. Okay, we don't see you. Uh, it is a pleasure to have us uh, in our today's seminar, Marcelo Romero Gomez. People working on dynamics uh, know her very well. Uh, she is uh, actually right now at the professor in the Department of Quantum Physics and Astrophysics at the University of Barcelona, which is uh, 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 something that uh, fits very well to the research activities uh, in our institute here, because we have both uh, research projects on these uh, two fields. Uh, for those that they are not, they don't know much so well, I can say that uh, she got uh, her PhD from the University of Catalonia in 2007. She is uh, a, a researcher linked to this uh, chaotic spirals in bad spiral galaxies uh, uh, theory that uh, you have heard a lot of seminars uh, here also from our group. Uh, she was a collaborator with uh, Leah Thanasula in the last uh, many years. She works uh, now with uh, the Milky Way dynamics, uh, both uh, uh, in modeling and uh, in observations uh, with data that she gets from, from Gaia. And uh, exactly this uh, plethora of uh, data that Gaia gives to the scientific community um, has allowed also the dynamical modeling and uh, research on the dynamics of the neighbors in the Mag Magellanic clouds. And we are very happy to have a talk about this from Merce. And uh, the talk may start immediately. So many thanks, Merce, for being with us. You may start. Many thanks for the invitation, for giving this seminar. Uh, so we can start. So as uh, Panos mentioned, uh, I started my early research doing dynamics and manifolds and more focused on the mathematics point of view but I'm moving to the dark or visible side of the science, if you want, and I am working on this Gaia mission of the European Space Agency. And the talk today is about one of the uh, capabilities that Gaia has given us uh, with their its magnificent uh, data sets, which is concentrated on the Magellanic Clouds. So the Magellanic Clouds, let me, let me see if I can pass the... So the, the motivation of this of this talk and on why focusing on the, on the Magellanic clouds and the dynamics and all these uh, topics is um, to have um, or to be able to study the full structures and and dynamics in bad galaxies. So far, we could do it theoretically, you know it very well, and with embodied simulations. Uh, when we go to the observer's uh, site and uh, to go um, to the data, then we, and for the Milky Way especially, and for also for external galaxies, we, we, we have the, the, the barrier that we have limited information. We have partial information. Uh, we can only have uh, positions or we have photometry or uh, we have um, a small amount of proper motions. But to study structure, we need three, uh, 3D uh, data set. So we need the two coordinates, the positions on the sky, but also we need accurate distances to place these stars in a, in a given volume. And we also, if we want to study the, the dynamics, apart from these positions and distances, we need the 3D velocity vector, which in the observer's point of view, uh, we, we need the two proper motions, which is the motion on the, on the sky plane, and the line of sight velocities. So, uh, and not only this, so it's not only the matter of having 6D data set, because this we had uh, previously with other surveys, but we want to have a statistically large sample and with an homogeneous sky coverage. Uh, because we're, what to do, uh, we want to be as similar as possible to what the data we had with embodied simulations or with theoretical models. So that's what how Gaia um, comes into, into the play. So now I'll, I'll go into the, I'll show you just a, a big uh, overview of what is Gaia. But Gaia uses, or provides us astrometry and photometry. And this will 
be crucial to, to be able to select stars in the LMC in this particular science case. Uh, it also provides um, proper motions and line of sight velocities, all with the same instrument. This is also very critical in, in, in the observer's point of view to have homogeneous data sets. And when we have this sixth information, then we can start uh, doing science, let's say, from our point of view of, as a dynamicist. Okay. So before getting into the science we're doing in the, in the LMC, let me remind you very roughly what is Gaia and, and how it works. So I have a, a couple of videos that I'll, I'll, I'll play and just that uh, the, the consortium prepared for the releases and they explain a little bit how Gaia, how Gaia works. So Gaia is a space telescope. And in fact, it has two main uh, mirrors, these two that are now um, brighter in the, in the video. Uh, they, these mirrors uh, reflect the, the stars, well, the, the, the instrument is rotating and scanning all, all sky. So you can see here in different colors the path that the, the light of the stars have inside the, the instrument. It has several secondary mirrors and in the end the light goes to the what we call the, the focal plane. So this is all inside the this shell. And um, it has two windows where the, the light gets and, and is reflected into the two principal mirrors. So once we have the, 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 the light reflected in the mirror, this is another view from, from inside the instrument. So we can see the, the, the two windows. These are openings that it's like the eyes of the of Gaia. And Gaia is rotating and it is uh, at a, a given angle with respect to, to the sun. The sun is at the other side of this of this shield. And it's in the L1 Lagrangian point, so uh, with the with the sun at the at the back, and because of the rotation of the Earth around the, the sun and the rotation of its around its own axis, it can scan the whole the whole sky. It's been observing for more than five years already it was launched in December 2013 and uh, now we have uh, several extensions so it was supposed to observe for five years until uh, 20, 20, 2019 but uh, now we are in the second extension so in the end we we double the, the observing time from five years to ten to ten years in the last in the last release. So this means uh, better accuracies and and better um, data. So once the 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 light of the stars have uh, uh, gone into the instrument and goes to the focal the focal plane, this is the focal plane of Gaia. It's about one hundred CCDs and uh, with more than one billion pixels. You can see that there are different uh, columns of, of CCDs. I'll explain, they are explained in, in the next video. But it, at that time, it's the largest um, focal plane launched in the, for, for sky observation. So now we go to how this focal plane uh, works. So as, as Gaia scans the sky using these two mirrors, this angle is fixed and it's critical that this angle is, is fixed. So we have, of course, more than one star in, in a given field that goes into the focal plane and from these two different line of sights. How exactly did the mission measure such a vast number of stars? With its two telescopes, so we have these two mirrors that in the end go reflect the light to the focal plane where it has the, the camera. 
with 106 CCDs and almost 1 billion pixels. And since Gaia is continually rotating, we have stars that continuously come to this focal plane. So these first two columns of CCDs detects each star or each source, we call source because it's observing everything in the sky. It can be a quasar, it can be an asteroid, or it can be star or an unresolved galaxy. Or And the first two columns um, just select the star and uh, it classifies it according to the brightness or initial measure of the brightness. And then once it classifies or once it selects the, the star, it will follow it to the next uh, set of nine columns, but it does not download all the data from all of the CCD because you have you can imagine that there are thousands of stars um, uh, at each uh, minute. So it makes a gate and it just follows the stars in each of the CCD and only downloads the information in this in this gate. This method is an optimization to deal with the enormous amount of data collected by Gaia. And this saves a lot of uh, a lot of um, gigabytes and, and space. So these first nine columns um, provide the data for the astrometry, so to know the position, the parallax, which is this indirect measure of the distance, and the proper motion of the star or the source in the in the sky. So these are the astrometric CCDs. These two columns are the, the, the photometers. So we have two, one in the red and one in the blue. So then we have this uh, color, this uh, broadband color, DP and, and RP. And this last set of CCDs is the spectro, spectrometer, spectrograph where we have uh, a little bit, uh, well, a bit higher resolution and we have a spectra to determine the line of sight velocity. So for the star that goes through all these CCDs, it uh, makes these raw observations according to the, the characteristics of each CCD and it will download it to the ground stations. And it's done continuously and repeatedly for each of the star that gets into these first two CCDs, these uh, sky mapper uh, CCDs. So this means that uh, we are downloading or we are making um, measures or taking measures of 2 million stars per hour and we are loading more than 50 gigabytes uh, every day. So imagine you can multiply this for uh, five or seven years of observations, and you can imagine the, the size of the of the archive. And you can you can you have also to take into account that uh, it start is not observed only once. It is it has a a, a mean of uh, 70, 70 observations as a mean each source. Some because of the scanning law, some regions in the sky uh, are observed more than than once or more more often than the others. So there is a question from the audience. May we interrupt? Oh, yeah, me? sure. You can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is the detection the uh, uh, the exposure time for each star in your CCD in each pixel? It's seconds. So it it's this the time it takes the the source to go through the focal plane. And it is enough to detect stars up to what distance? I mean, uh, distance, we do not talk in terms of distance. We It has a limit in magnitude of 20.7 20. magnitudes in the visible, in this okay. Gaia band, which is the whole broad band in the visible. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll but you have to take into account that just what I was saying now, that for each star, we come, Gaia comes back at a mean rate of 70 times. So we have 70 observations of the same source. So the first time it, it, it detects a, a source, a star, um, Gaia assigns a, an ID, and then every time it comes back to this, to the a new, uh, another source, it checks if this source can be one that has already been observed or it's a new one, 
And if it's one that has already been observed, then it stacks all the information. Okay. So we have mean, we will, at this moment, we are delivering mean values, but in the next release, we will have epoch data. So all the astrometry and uh, brightness and uh, radial velocities and, and, and all this, that for each time, Gaia has observed this uh, this source, this star. Okay. Okay. Since since we interrupted you, there is one more question. Good. No, no worries. Okay. <laughs> okay, Yanis, go on. Yes, thank you. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, I have a related question. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, so it passes seven. This seventy times is uh, in in one orbit, right? Or or is it? Uh, no, no, no. In in five years. In five years. So, so you this have... seventy was the, the the official number for five years nominal operations. Right. So you can multiply by two because at the end, at the final release, will be ten years. Ten years. Yeah. Okay. So you have. Uh... And, and in each pass, it goes only so uh, like uh, 10, 10, 12 times or something? Yes, yes, yes. I have 12 uh, data points separately by one year, right? So something like this. Well, it depends on the on the region and the sky because it has not a continuous uh, sky coverage. So there are regions because it's it scans in the ecliptic plane. And, uh, and then when you do this rotation of 45 degrees and around the sun and the rotation around the sun and the, the time it takes to make its own uh, rotation around its own axis. Mm -hmm. So it has not a continuous coverage of the sky, but there are regions that are more scanned than the others, but mm -hmm. it covers all sky. But, and that's why I say in mean, in five years, it's 70, 70 observations per source. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so we continue. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so this is a bit of uh, animation of what is of what is Gaia, and I I know that you do not read anything here. That's the purpose. So this is what we delivered in the in the last uh, release of uh, of data that was in um, December. No, that was last year in June twenty twenty two, and it's a long list. Uh, it covers the astrometry, photometry, astrophysical parameters, and variable uh, stars, or rotational velocities, it, the quasars. Uh, it covers a lot of things. You can go into the website and see the full information. I just put a summary here and for our own interest of this talk. Okay, so we, ha we have um, the astrometry, so positions in the sky, equatorial coordinates, parallax. It's this measure of the of the aspect or how, how the 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 position of the sky changes with with time and will give you the the distance or then an indirect measure of the of the distance and the motion of the of the source in the in the sky and this is for you can see this is ten to the nine so it's almost one point five um, billion sources. Also, for these uh, sources, we have photometry. So this is this broad band, in, broad band in the visible, but also the 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 band centered on the blue and the one in the red. So when we subtract, we have the color. And you you, you remember in the focal plane this last set of uh, CCDs that I was said that this is the spectrograph and it does not cover the whole column. This is for a budget purposes. And we do not have line of sight velocities for all these 10 to the nine uh, sources, but for a subset of them. So it has a restriction on the magnitude. So this one, this large number is because we have a limiting magnitude of 20.7, but uh, for the spectrograph, we have a limited magnitude of around 16. So it's four order of magnitudes um, less. And, uh, so far, we deliver the, this uh, 33 mean uh, line of sight velocities, radial velocities, which is still the largest uh, data set with line of sight velocities. And apart from that, we deliver the spectra, astrophysical parameters, effective temperature, gravities, uh, masses, and uh, all we can derive from the spectra. Uh, variability because we have epoch data and for CFA, generally variable stars, we have the light curves. 
solar system objects, uh, those who are interested in as asteroids, we, we can also observe uh, the asteroids and compute the orbits and, and all this. And quasars, galaxy candidates, which are very far away and they are re uh, not resolved and they are seen as a point-like source. And all this is accompanied by more than 45 papers and online documentation. And we do this for every release. So now we are just published the, the third release. Next release, the fourth release, we say it's going to be at the end of 2025. Yes. And, and then which will have epoch data. And in the end, the final final release, it's, uh, I don't remember if it's 2028 or 2029. You can have all this information in the, in the, Gaia, in the Gaia website. So I hope this uh, very small overview helps understanding this motivation of uh, why now we are ready to start to do dynamics uh, with Gaia. Okay, so this is the now at the, at the slide number ten. I put the outline of the talk. So we will focus on the Gaia capabilities to do dynamics in the LMC. So the first thing that we need to do is to be able to separate what stars belong to the LMC and what stars belong to the Milky Way disk and halo. So we need to separate uh, properly the stars. We do not want to have contamination of Milky Way stars in the LMC because it will bias the kinematics. Then I will go, if there are any students uh, here in the, in the audience, I will go very quickly to some basic galactic uh, kinematics. Uh, and if there are none and everybody knows, just tell me and I will skip these slides. And then I'll just show you some of the some of the results that or the things or the topics we are working uh, currently. And this is a list of the of the uh, well, papers that we have been published and, and some of them are still in preparation because there is a, a an ongoing PhD thesis uh, focused on this on this topic. The the one by uh, Oscar Jimenez Aran is supervised by me and and Xavi Luri here in, in Barcelona. Okay, so first thing, we have to separate uh, LMC and, and Milky Way stars. You cannot, you cannot only go to the Gaia archive and say, okay, download all the data that is uh, around the LMC position, because of course you get all the cone and you will have data from the LMC, sure, but also from the Milky Way. And if you want to study the, kinema the internal kinematics of the LMC, you have to get rid of the stars in the, in the Milky Way. How do we do this? We tried several, several things, several uh, uh, statistical uh, codes. And in the end, we, we go to the to a uh, neural network uh, strategy. So for to neural networks work um, by uh, having a training sample. In this training sample, you know very well what is your purpose, what is your science case. In our case, we want to separate what is stars in the LMC and what is stars in the in the Milky Way. So it, we put uh, a simulation. Um, we have uh, in the Gaia Consortium a simulation that has been used to to train or to to test all the pipelines, and this is the Gaia Object Generator. So in this Gaia Object Generator, we have uh, separated the stars in the in the LMC and in the Milky Way. So we have uh, you can see in this panel on the top left. This is the um, the LMC, well, this is the, the whole sample. This is what we get from Gaia data, just selecting stars in the, around the center of the, of, the LM, of the LMC. You can see a lot of uh, uh, background uh, or foreground stars here. And this is what uh, the one in the, on the right, there you see what is what we call our training sample. So we have this orange um, uh, color of the density of stars in the in the foreground or in the background, and you can see this square or uh, trapezoidal uh, shape of the the stars in the in the LMC. But if you compare them, even though this this cut here is very sharp, 
you compare the parallaxes, the magnitude ranges, the proper motion ranges, and the color magnitude diagrams of both samples, they are in a comparable range. Okay, so uh, inside the simulation, we know very well what is the LMC and what is uh, the Milky Way, and we can do the same uh, kind of a study of a characterization. We know what is the proper motion. You can see the proper motion of the LMC. The LMC is very far away, so it has a very peaked uh, distribution. The Milky Way, you have stars that are very nearby, and then we'll have large proper motions, and stars that are in the halo will have a small proper motions. Uh, same for the parallax, the, star, the, the, the LMC is far away, so the peak of the parallaxes in the LMC are centered to zero. You can see this negative tail because we do not have good measures there. They are very faint stars and the parallax uncertainties are very large. Uh, but for the Milky Way, we have nearby stars, we have far away stars, and we, so we can, they have very different um, parallax distributions. The distribution of the magnitude is also different. The one from the, the, the in the in the Milky Way you have you can have very bright stars, but in the in the LMC it's mainly, as I said, uh, faint stars. And the same for the color magnitude uh, diagram. Okay, so we use this this uh, test uh, or this simulation to to um, to, to, to to, to classify or to, to train a neural network. And this is just a list of the other strategies that we have tried and the, the one that got better results in terms of biases or uh, misclassifications, knowing the training sample is the one of the neural network. And this is the one we, we use. So the inputs in the neural networks is, uh, I think it's, it's 11, uh, but, um, Variables, the two positions, the parallax, the parallax and its uncertainties, the proper motions and uncertainties, and the photometry. And then the output is just a number. It's a probability of the star of a star being uh, at the LMC. If this number is close to one, you have high probabilities of this source to be in the LMC. And if it's close to zero, it will it's more probable that this star is in the in the Milky Way. So we did some tests in the in the simulations uh, that uh, things uh, we recover things uh, properly, and then what we do is apply it to the to the data. And when we apply it to the data, you have this gray distribution in the background. You have a peak very high around one, so it's good. We will have we have candidate stars in the LMC. We have another peak very high around uh, zero, so these stars will belong to the to the Milky Way and what it's in between, it's something that the neural network cannot decide. So it, we will have a, a, a one sample or another depending on the cut we apply to this probability. So uh, in the end we did, we, 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 we got two data sets with these two probabilities. One we cut around here. So we have a quite, um, uh, what we call it optimal, optimal sample. So we, we try to, to include as many as possible stars in the in the LMC. And the this other cut here, the, the red one around 0 0.01 probability, it's what we call a more complete sample. So we don't know what happens to the stars here. They might be in the in between, they might be in the LMC or in the SMC. The classifier cannot tell. Let's include it. Let's include them in our data set and check if this uh, really make a, a difference or not. But you can see a, a zoom in this region. So they are a very small amount. So this is, uh, in the end, what the, the four data sets uh, that we will be working. And in the here on the on the on the right, you have two columns. So these are density maps. So I just count maps. The, the column on the left is, is a stars that are classified to belong to the LMC, and the column on the right stars that are classified to, be, to belong to the Milky Way. And each row is a different data set according to this uh, probability cut. The first row is different uh, because there was a, a Gaia collaboration paper with um, with uh, preliminary data, what we call the early data release three, 
with only had uh, a, a strometry. And in this uh, collaboration papers that will go that go with the releases, we are not allowed to make very sophisticated uh, methods or, or modeling. Uh, just show the capabilities of Gaia data. And then in this case, we only to remove or to clean stars from the Milky Way in the LMC region, we just made a, a cut or a strategy based on the proper motions. So this is what we call this proper motion selection. But in, it's in this follow-up paper uh, based on the thesis of, uh, of Oscar that we were able to experience and, and try with other more sophisticated methods. It's what we, we have these um, uh, uh, samples based on the neural network classifier. So we have this more complete sample or this more optical sam optimal sample. In the optimal, the, uh, if you take only the, the optimal sample, you still see that in as the, the classifier classifies a lot of stars that are in this region uh, to belong to the to the Milky Way. And we we performed an extra cut, hard cut on the on the um, on the brightness of the stars. So if, if we keep only stars that are brighter than nineteen point five, assuming that the ones that are faint are uh, the ones that belong to the Milky Way. And this is the difference it makes. So we recover some of the stars that were in these regions here, and we put them in the in the LMC. Okay, so uh, I will be showing, well, or for, for consist, I think uh, I will, we'll, we'll keep, we keep, we work in these four data sets in order to see how, uh, to, to see if the, the Milky Way contamination makes an effect or not in the, in the kinematics of the, of the LMC. Okay, so uh, we validated these samples with, uh, with well known, um, with, with well known tracers where we know the, the distances. So, so, for example, variable stars, say phaser, lyre. Uh, there are another strategy to de de derive the distances in astrophysical parameter, which is this uh, star horse uh, based on Bayesian, uh, Bayesian method. So, we validate the, our samples. We get um, good agreements. We have um, a contamination of the order of uh, of ten percent. So that's what we have here: five and and ten percent. This one here is just using the line of side velocities, which were not used in the training in the training sample. So we can see that the the line of side velocity in the LMC is very different from the line of side velocity in the in the Milky Way. So here is an, uh, also a way to evaluate this peak here that we we classify as the LMC of course is not in the in the LMC it has the kinematics of the of the milky way so we can estimate the contamination also using the LMC the conclusion is that we have okay either way or the other depending on the probability value we cut we have a contamination of the order of 5 to 10% okay so this one side now we have uh, good data sets or as good as possible data sets uh, with high probability of, uh, of membership in the in the LMC. Now let's go and study the kinematics of the stars in the in the internal kinematics of the stars in the in the LMC. So I'll just do some a small uh, background uh, concepts, and if you know it, just panos tell me, and I'll skip it because it's just uh, understanding what is the quadruple signature or the kinematic signature of the bar. And this is something I prepared for uh, my master's students and I'll, 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 and I'll show you very quickly here. No, let's go so on if, because there are in the audience, there are not only people uh, working on dynamics, so it's nice to have this introduction. So please. Good, good. good. So let's, let's imagine we have a, a completely axisymmetric galaxy. So the stars, uh, the orbits of stars around the galactic center in the Cartesian frames, you have the galactic center here, you have X and Y. So the stars in mean will follow a circular orbit. Imagine a perfect, a perfect uh, closed orbit. So we have here a star on this orbit, but this is the velocity vector. And if you decompose the star in the cylindrical frame, so in radial and rotational or, or tangential velocity, you see that um, all the component, all the velocity decomposes in the tangential velocity and you do not have any component in the radial, in the radial component, okay? And the tangential velocity is in fact a, a measure of the, of, the, of the rotation core of the galaxy if everything is, is symmetric. 
This is for one star at a given radius from the galactic center. Uh, what I have done is using uh, test particle simulations of a disk or a compl completely axisymmetric potential, and then mapping the radial component and the tangential component in this XY plane. So the galactic center here is again at the center of coordinates. You can see that the radial component is centered in this, every, apart from noise or poison noise, is around, it's green, it's it's uh, it's um, zero uh, radial velocity, What is what we expect from this decomposition here. And the tangential motion, you have the, the you reproduce the 2D, let's say, rotation curve, okay? Okay, so this is if the galaxy was completely axisymmetric and in circular or quasi-circular motion. Ah, if you if we, in this tangential motion you remove the rotation the, the rotation curve, of course you get again zero zero velocity. Everything centered on the green. Okay, but we know uh, that uh, there are bad galaxies, and so the orbits uh, have been well studied in the in the past. The orbits in the bar region are elliptical and there is uh, here you can see some of the of the families and some of examples of a well known and well characterized bard galaxies and i put here the lmc because it is established now that the lmc well now on some for some years that the lmc this elongated bright feature it is, is a, the, the galactic bar of the of the lmc and which is our target so now let's do the same exercise, but instead of a, a circular orbit, an elliptical orbit. So the galactic center, um, the Cartesian frame, we have a velocity vector, and now we decompose this velocity vector in the in cylindrical coordinates, in polar coordinates. And we will do this exercise at four positions on the elliptical orbit. In this first, which is labeled A, we are along the semi-major axis. So if you put the star here, the velocity vector will be here, will be this black arrow, and you decompose it in polar coordinates. Again, all the component is in the tangential direction and nothing in the radial direction. This is what I write here. So all the tangents, all the velocity goes into the tangential, and you have nothing in the in the radial direction. If you go to a position along the semi-minor axis, the same. You have uh, all the velocity decomposes in the tangential direction and nothing in the uh, radial direction. But now let's go to a position in between, and I made the plot, the plot a little bit bigger, in between the major and the semi-minor axis. Again, the black is the velocity vector, but now we do have a decomposition in the tangential and in the radial component. And you can see there always will be a, a positive tangential velocity in the direction of rotation. And in this case, in this position of the elliptical orbit, you have some uh, negative uh, radial uh, component because we define uh, positive to the, to the outer side. And this is in this position that which I label C, but if you go to the symmetric in the other side, Again, the velocity vector, the tangential, uh, the tangential component is always positive in the direction of rotation, but now the radial component is outwards, so positive. So you can now guess that if we have uh, the whole family of elliptical orbits in the VAR region, and we do this decomposition along all the elliptical orbit and uh, along all different radius and a different uh, of, the, the, of the different uh, members of the family of the periodic orbits, you will, we will have a, a trend. And the trend is this following. When here the bar is along the major axis, this is a test particle simulation of a, of a bar galaxy. And the same, so I put at at, at each given position in the xy plane, I have the velocity vector and I decompose it in cylindrical coordinates. And in this uh, plot on the left, I map the radial component. And in the um, map on the right, I map the, the tangential component. So from the, ra the radial, from this exercise here, you can see that we can expect a change of sign along the major axis and then along the minor axis. And this is what we get here. We have a perfect uh, um, lobe uh, and a change of sign along the major and minor axis and a change of sign 
or a different sign depending on you are on one side of the major axis or on the other side and symmetrically at the other side. So here we have negative uh, radial component, here we have positive radial component, and we have this clover leaf pattern, so what, how we explain it to the, to the, for, for outreach, but it is what we call the quadruple signature of the bar in the kinematic space in the radial component. In the tangential component, we have to take into account that the galaxy rotates. So we have to subtract the, the rotation curve and we also see this um, clover leaf pattern and the quadrupole pattern of the, of the bar. Okay, so this is the, the, the small summary of the kinematics of the, of the bar. And now we'll go to the data. Okay, so we have these uh, four data sets with uh, FIDEDIGNE um, memberships. And let's, uh, we have proper versions, we have line of sight velocities, so we can make as it was a simulation and make these kinematic maps. Okay, this is what I, I explained here. Okay, so before going to the kinematic maps, just show you some uh, the kinematic profiles, the 1D, the 1D projection. So this is as a function of the galactocentric radius, now always centered on the LMC. We have the radial velocity profiles. Uh, you can see here um, that it's not a flat curve centered on zero. So this is a way to say the, this, the galaxy is not axisymmetric. We have a, we have some trends, and this is the rotation curve. The, um, each color correspond to one of these uh, four samples that uh, that I showed you uh, before. That we depending on the p value of the of the classification. So we have uh, this more complete. Let's focus on the orange and the green. The, this more complete sample or the more optimal sample. You can see that in the rotation curve, it makes a difference to have stars or contamination of stars of the of the Milky Way or not. In the in the maps, um, I here you will see that I have a I have a distinction. That there's a, I have no line of sight velocity or with line of sight velocity. I show you later. There is a a whole uh, mess of velocity transformation of a coordinate transformations to transform from observables in the heliocentric frame to the frame of the of the LMC. And uh, there is a, 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 an assumption here that since we do not have reliable distances, you have seen that we have negative parallaxes and all this, uh, we have, I will show you two, 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 two kinds of kinematic maps. That one, one with uh, not taking into account the line of sub velocity, assuming that everything is zero, so there is no motion towards the, the sun. And the other one that do have line of side velocity. But as I said before, we do not, Gaia does not deliver so many line of side velocities. So the data set with line of side velocity is there, but statistically, it, we have much less stars. So we will have, we will compare what is the, the advantages and disadvantages or what biases do we, have, uh, do we put in the kinematic maps if we do not take this line of side velocity. So, of course, if there is no line of side velocity, the vertical motion is centered on, on, on zero. This is as expected. But you can see here on the, on the right, these same maps as I was showing you before with the simulation. This is the radial component in cylindrical coordinates. This is the, the reduced uh, tangential component once we have subtracted the, subtracted the rotation curve. And in the, bl the black contour shows you the, the over density of the, LM, of the data in this LMC region. And this is for one of these data sets, okay? So you can see this elongated, the, the, the counter meets this elongation uh, around the center. So this is the what we call the, the bar. It has a very long spiral arm. It has bifurcation. So it's a very complex uh, structure here. And this is the same um, contour that they put in all the three components. And you can see that the radial velocity component has this clover leaf pattern of negative, positive, negative, positive, and same here, negative, positive, negative, positive, but uh, it is asymmetric, okay? So this is what we get in the data, and it happens with all the data sets, and including or not including the, 
the line of seven. So just this is a zoom of this region, and I put I remind you here what we expect from the from the simulations. So just by eye, you can draw a line. This I did with the with the PowerPoint itself. Just draw a line where this change of of sign occurs between the this uh, radial velocity component. So I can try to guess what is the orientation angle of the bar. And it, it, it's it's consistent and coherent between the radial and the and the ten, residual tangential velocity. Uh, exactly, and we here you can see very well that this uh, quadrupole is asymmetric. This was for one of these samples, and and now I show you that it happens. This this qualitative the, all the maps are qualitatively the the same. In the in the bar region, in the outer parts, there are differences. For example, look at this negative uh, trend here, which is not quite present in this more contaminated sample, or these trends here. They are qualitatively the same, at least in the in the bar region. And if I make the same, but for the subsample of line of sight velocities, which are thirty around thirty thousand stars. Still, it may be it may seem a small number, but it's the largest uh, sample with line of sight velocities we have so far in the LMC region. The trend is the same, so we have again this asymmetric quadrupole signature in the in the bar region. Okay, so this is ah interesting is with when we have the line of sight velocities that now the vertical velocity map is 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 not zero, so we we do see a. Uh, uh, I, I, I look at this change of sign here. This might be the the that the disk of the LMC is warped uh, because you have this negative positive negative positive trend and change of sign around this. But we have to be careful with this because it is highly dependent on the inclination and the position angle of the galaxy. And a small mistake on these two angles bias a lot this uh, this map. And this is what we, we studied this in the in in this paper. Okay, so very recently, we wanted when when showing these maps because we published this uh, last year, when showing these maps and this asymmetric signature of the of the or, or this asymmetric quadrupole in the in the bar region, we wanted to understand uh, why. And um, we, what we do is two different things. So one thing is we know from from the from the literature and in the uh, for a long time ago that the the bar of the of the LMC is offset is not symmetric the density is not symmetric, and uh, it has only one spiral arm. And this is something very strange for those that are for those of you that are familiar with bar galaxy simulations and external galaxies. We're used to 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 see. To, let me go back to this plot here. When we imagine a bar galaxy, we imagine this: so a bisymmetric spiral grand design, or a ring, or something more bisymmetric. We 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 do not ex, we do not see. Uh, or it's not usual to have a bar galaxy with only one only one bar. Okay, so let me go back to to this to the to this motivation. So. We know that the bar of the LMC is offset and it only has one well-designed spiral arm. And the, these kinematic maps tell us that the, the, the quadruple signature of the bar is, is asymmetric. So in the recent months, we have been trying to, to investigate these, these two facts. And to cover the first one, what we have done is to, to make a very simple toy, toy model to, to model analytically to put a Ferrer's bar uh, on top of a Miyamoto Nagai disk and to make the this bar offset or at least the center of mass offset with respect to the center of the galaxy, we just add a plumber bulge um, along the semi-major axis. And here we just show you uh, four different models. The one on the left is always a symmetric case. And the one, the, the three on on the right are different displacements, different shifts uh, along the major axis. So you can see how the the isocontours change when you displace this plumber uh, bulge, which is a way to to shift the center of mass of the of the galaxy. 
So what we did with these um, four models or this model with four different uh, parameters is to go back to the to the let's say my thesis okay let's compute what are the what is the position of the lagrangian points the zero velocity curves and when everything is symmetric the energy or the jacobi energy of the two lagrangian points is the same and you have here the the zero the, the forbidden region the zero velocity curve and here you will have the lyapunov orbits but when you displace the center of mass and you make the, the your problem asymmetric the Jacobi energy of the two equilibrium points then is different. So you will have a, a zero velocity curve for each of the two of the two energies. And now you can see that it well, they, they are different. They do not coincide, of course. And you have different openings. So here, for example, the, the well, let me go to the extreme case. This blue curve here is very open here, while uh, the the red one is 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 very small. And this is open, and this is closed in this in this set for these two uh, two specific uh, Jacobi energies. So this difference, just by adding or just by shifting the center of mass, makes the problem as completely asymmetric. So the the families of orbits will not exist at the same, um, or will have different shapes and different kind of dynamics for a given energy level, and this translates in um, the amount of unstable orbits that will uh, depart from these uh, saddle point uh, regions. This is the symmetric case. And this is just an exercise of computing, just integrating some uh, initial conditions uh, that are starting on this y-axis at a given energy. And you can see that they follow the, the invariant manifolds and this goes to the stable branch and then they escape in the unstable branch and it's everything is symmetric. But if we do the same in the case where the, the center of mass is, is shifted and we do the, the same exercise, you can see that we always start in this position here, but the spirals that develop are also asymmetric. And this was for a, for a general galaxy or for a general model, not trying to mimic the, what we see in the, in the LMC of only one arm, but we question ourselves if, would it be the extreme case, the LMC that the, 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 the offset of the, of the bar is making this arm, for example, you can see it's less developed than this one to, to get suppressed. So there's these openings, there's this, really do not open and we can only have one one do not open and only have one arm in one side so this is still a question we have in in our uh, heads uh, this was for the spiral perturbation and or the spiral only one trying to explain the asymmetries in the spiral lines because of symmetries in the in the bar and the other thing is this asymmetric kinematic maps. And using the same model, now I just integrate some initial conditions in the whole disk and, and map the, the radial velocity component and see if this quadrupole uh, also becomes asymmetric because of having an asymmetric uh, bar. And indeed, we have this uh, asymmetry. We, I only have this plot because this was a bachelor thesis, a uh, project, bachelor project of a, of a bachelor uh, student, uh, but it looks also promising <clears throat> to keep investigating this fact and going into the direction of what we are observing in the in the LMC. Okay. Um, more things that we can do with these kinematic maps. Uh, this is just work in progress. Uh, I would ask you not to share this, uh, these slides uh, or not making a screen cap uh, captures because it's it's the PhD thesis of, uh, of Oscar. But the, the, these kinematic maps are good enough to try to determine the bar pattern speed using different set of methods. The first one that, that we can think is the, the classical Tremin and Weinberg using this line of side velocities. But we can make a, 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 a derivation or a new a modification of the classical Tremin and Weimar using the, the now the 2D kinematic maps. 
We have other strategies, uh, one recently published by the team of Walter Den and Martin Semchuk and Ralph Schoenrich based on, on simulations, but why not trying to, to apply it to the, to the data? And something that we, an empirical model that we, we, we well, empirical method that we, we, we used for the Milky Way bar and try to, to apply it to the to the LMC data. So we have a, a different set of, of methods that we have tested and we are evaluating using uh, simulations and trying to apply to the Gaia data. Let's see if we can derive or provide a, a first value of the patent speed of the, of the LMC bar. So I'll just show you very preliminary results based on this uh, Tremaine and Bangman method on the, on the kinematic maps. For those of you who are not very familiar, uh, this is a classical method of uh, in the paper in the 84 by Tremaine and, and Weimer. It is based on the continuity equation and making some assumptions on the density distribution and the and the well, on the on the uh, exactly on the density distribution, so that in the end you can derive a a, a, a pattern speed just by looking at the slope of the mean velocity and the mean density in, at a given uh, direction, at a given line of sight. So this is just a, an example uh, applied to one of the simulations that we have available. So you can see the bar density here. You constrain what is the position of the bar. And then uh, you, you map what is the mean uh, positions and the mean velocities and just fit a straight line to this to this uh, data set and the slope of this straight line will give you a value uh, of the of the pattern speed and we have tested this with a uh, with simulations and one of the things that we we asked is is this value dependent on the orientation angle and the question is yes and it's a big warning for those of you uh, if you're using the Tremaine and Bayer method in external galaxies. So this is depending on the orientation angle, this the slope, so this value here. So we do this for every degree of the orientation of the bar, and we get very this blue curve here, very different values. The green region is the um, for the angles for which we recover the, the good pattern speed, because this is a simulation, we know what is the real pattern speed, but you can see that there are big systematics, uh, even kind of asymptotes. So we have to be very careful with, with that. So this is a, a, an attempt, and this is what we, we this is already a, trying to apply it to the to the to the data. You can see the offset of the bar. This is the the um, trying to fit the slope, but you can see there is a very sparse distribution. So we have an initial value. But we do well. It's a, it's a for one method, and we're trying to apply it for different ones, and uh, giving all the words of caution of the different methods here. And the other thing that we are currently working is, uh, since simulations are very useful to understand or try to to interpret uh, data, where um, we are uh, running high resolution and body simulations of interacting galaxies. We are doing this in the framework of uh, OCRE. OCRE is a European institution, uh, which is called Open Clouds for Research Environments. So we submitted a proposal to, to run uh, three research projects uh, in this cloud environment. And um, one of these research projects is this is what I was telling you, this state-of-the-art and body simulations of the of LMC, SMC, Milky Way type of interacting galaxies, plus two others. Um, and uh, with these simulations, what we would like to do is, well, do the same as we do with the data, study the, the internal kinematics, study the Gaia biases, start the, study the, the interaction between the SMC and the LMC. So there are uh, many things that we can do with these simulations. Let me do a small advertisement here, I'm finishing. Uh, we are organizing a, a workshop on scientific computing in the cloud in, in Barcelona. This will be held in May, uh, the, the last week of May, beginning of June. The, the registration is open. 
and we will have um, um, speakers of the three main uh, cloud providers, which is uh, Google, uh, Amazon, and Microsoft. There will be hand-on sessions. We will be, we'll give access to all the participants to these uh, three different clouds, and and we'll have the opportunity to work uh, with each own uh, science case and see the capabilities of what 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 cloud services can can give or can do for uh, for research in in science so everyone who is uh, interested on in, in this uh, do not hesitate uh, contacting me and okay uh, these are the first snapshots this again this is from yesterday uh, this is one of a snapshot of the simulation between the three interacting galaxies lmc smc and milky way here i just show you the SMC approaching the uh, the LMC. You can see here a bar of the Milky Way. You can see very asymmetric uh, spiral arms. Here you have the kind of vertical projection. You can see that the the LMC is is bended. So uh, and this is just one snapshot, and the simulations are still uh, running. But at least they look promising, and we can well, yeah, we, that we can do something with the simulations and to be able to compare with the with the data. And that's it. So this is my my summary. I hope I have convinced you that it's time that now, if all of you that are uh, fam that are working in dynamic modeling of, uh, of galaxies, uh, that you can use the large Magellanic cloud as a test bed for uh, all these uh, models and check the the, the validity and the, uh, what they can tell us. Uh, the Magellanic Cloud is a, is a very complex galaxy. There is more than one mechanism, dynamical mechanism in place. So, well, that's why it is uh, interesting. That, but the quality of the data is good to start doing and start um, tackling this, this model. We are doing something, but there are many, many projects that we can do and we can collaborate or uh, you can start. And that's it. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, very, very, very interesting goal, what you said. Let me try to bring you here in view. So great. Uh, it's time for questions. Let me let, let, let me ask first uh, two things uh, to clarify some. I, I didn't hear if you said that. What is the distance, uh, the radius uh, around the sun that Gaia selects data on the galactic disk, let's say? It's not all over the galactic disk. Ah, no. Um, because of this magnitude limit of 20.7, yes. for the Milky Way, it reaches in Z equals zero, so in the galactic plane, yes. around uh, five, uh, the limits of the bar. So at five kiloparsecs from the sun. From the sun, okay. In Z equals zero. Because of, the, because of the extinction and the limit and the limited amount of plane but above the plane so from z equal zero you can see the kind of mouth opening mm -hmm. and you can get to the other side of the bar or at least to the galactic center yeah. for stars at one kiloparsec or less than one kiloparsec from the galactic plane okay so it reaches practically the distance reaches from the sun to the galactic bar right this, this to the galactic bar this, okay <laughs> and and the uh, uh the slides you had for uh, lmc so the the, the correlation is uh, practically at the end of the bar or or yes okay for this uh, this is what i can tell you that is preliminary work okay. but with this pattern speed the correlation is just a bit after the end of the bar this 1.4, 1.5 if in the ratio of R, R correlation R bar. Uh, say that again, 1 point? 4, 1.5, depending 1. on 4, the method. It's, it's farther away then, it's not just at the end. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's at the, after, the, so it, yeah, it's, it's 1.5 times the end of the bar. So it's a slow rotating bar, let, let's say. Yes, it's a, low, it's a slow rotating bar. Pushes the rotation, yes. ah, okay, okay, okay. It's at the slow, it's at the slow end, yes. That's at slow, yeah. Okay, great, great. So, uh, other questions from from here in the in the audience, or if uh, let me check. Okay, Yanis again. Yanis, go ahead, please. Yeah. 
Yes, thank you. That was, that was a very nice talk. Um, I'm not working in the field, so I have two questions. Maybe excuse my ignorance. Um, mm -hmm. One question was in the first uh, part of your talk uh, with the neural network classification of LMC and Milky Way uh, stars. Um, I, maybe I missed it, but I think you showed the selection based on parallax and um, and the, and let's say kinematic uh, uh, parameters. Uh, but my understanding is that you said Gaia has also spectra. Is there not a possibility to differentiate spectrally the the two? That's a good question. At the time we did this, DR three was not public yet. Ah, okay. So we did this at the beginning of last year, and the spectra came and in June, All right. and the paper was almost accepted by then. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a good way. It's a, if we do this again, it, it would be indeed uh, that the spectra can help because you can see that we use this mean photometry that comes mm -hmm. from the from the spectra, but we we have never tried with the spectra itself. So there is a plan to do this in the future uh, analysis? Um, I think there is a master's student that's doing something in this in this direction. direction. Okay. But I don't know the details. Good, thank you. And the second question is in your theory part of your talk. Um, in the second example, I think it was the more realistic one with the elliptical orbits. On the mm -hmm. plot on the left, you were showing uh, what was it? Uh, the radial velocity? No, no. In the in the in the yes, in this one yes. So my question is, uh, what is causing the change of sign outside the outer radius that we? Ah, have? That, these yeah. are the parallels. I I didn't get into the ah. into this on purpose, but we believe that these are the parallels. So in in I don't know if you see there are two there are two um, dotted lines. Yes, yes. One is around five kiloparsecs, which is very close to corrotation in this case. Mm -hmm. So you can see that this clover leaf uh, vanishes at the uh, from corrotation onwards, yeah. and the other is a is a, the outer limb blood resonance. I see. I see. Okay, so because so yeah, I, 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 was looking at this, so I, see, I see the same sign mm. up up to the second circle, but then the sign changes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, and I, I, this is the this is the outer limb blood resonance of the bar. Okay, so I, I'm wondering if one if does not separate uh, radial and tangential, takes the line of sight, takes the residual, then applying a kind of Kantian method. It would be interesting to to see if one can uh, see since we have an equal two component practical here. Then in this line mm -hmm. of sight residual velocity, one could observe a transition from an equal one to an equal three crossing corrotation. That would be interesting if you we have the have data. Tried, we have made this M this Fourier decomposition to the data, yeah. but we have kept to the M equal two mode yes. because we were interested in, in the bar. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and the the the, pro, the point is I, I, I can't find the, the paper eh? because I only showed the paper on the LMC, but okay. we published a paper on the Milky Way yeah. where we have exactly these maps, but with only one side of the map because we do not reach the whole galaxy. So we only have to the to the galactic center. And you can see the quadruple, so half of this quadruple very well with Gaia data in the in the Milky Way. But in our position, yeah, so in the solar position, which would be that people say that we are very close to the outer limblad of the the kinematics are very are not so clear. So it we think we see the one to one resonance of the bar yeah. in the solar, around the solar neighborhood, but uh, this clean change of sign at okay, the outer. This is just for models, of course, but that's why exactly. I'm asking. Just for models. <laughs> Thank you, Keita. We have yeah. this paralans, we have Perseum's arm around, so the, we have many things here. Right. But we have the maps public. So if you if you're interested, is this Gaia collaboration, Dreamel, uh, Romero Gomez, yeah. 2022. So if you're nice. interested, you can... nice. and the, the data the data of Gaia are given uh, 
in uh, in what form? It's of course reduced, but uh, you just get uh, velocities uh, parallax. You, you get alpha delta parallax, mm -hmm. proper motions, and line of sight velocities. If you are interested in line this, but there are many codes mm -hmm. in Python mm -hmm. that makes you the velocity transformation to get the bx, by, bz. If you are okay, interested. they translate that. Okay. Exactly. So, yeah. You have to assume the distance of the sun to the galactic center. You have to assume a velocity of the sun around the galactic center mm -hmm. to have galactocentric velocities. So and this is available. So you you get you go to a site and then you get this. Uh, okay, good. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you go to the archive, mm -hmm. you will get you will get what Gaia gives, which is heliocentric values. Mm -hmm. okay? So equatorial coordinates, heliocentric equatorial coordinates. To make this kind of maps, you have to do your own velocity transformations. Okay. But there are codes like GALPAI mm -hmm. that makes it for you. Nice. Or even TopCat, if you are familiar with TopCat, they can also make the velocity transformations. Interesting, okay. Okay, so. Does anybody else who wants to ask something from not from or, or give me a call and I'll help you and I'll give you mine. Thank you. But, <laughs> I hope I but they, 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 they are available because it's what theoreticians do. We always have to work exactly. in the so galactosy. You avoid the, the very time consuming <laughs> part exactly. of translation. But okay. so the, the, there are codes available. Mm -hmm. Many, many thanks, uh, Marce. Uh, it was really, really, really very very interesting and uh, we enjoyed the talk it was i was glad to see you again and mm -hmm. uh, thank you again so bye, bye so if i just wanted to say yeah. that if anyone that's listening to the recording later and wants to contact me just okay so there is uh, no problem because you said questions. that, that uh, this is something that it has not to be so we are what well this this, here, this, but... this ongoing works I just wanted to say, tell you that, well, I wanted to show you because we are working with okay. this data set. Uh, there is no and problem to if uh, our technicians uh, put it in a uh, week or so on the on the internet. No, no. I don't, I don't think just make good use of it. And, yeah, and exactly. It. Okay. And okay. if you have any questions, just contact me and, and, sure. and we can try to answer later. Thanks again. Okay. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.